there's a few more topics that I wanted to address in terms of evolution, especially macroevolution. And the one that you have to, we already mentioned before in the lecture series about evolution, but I wanted to bring back is the idea of adaptive radiation. Now, we just mentioned in the previous video, we talked about hybrosomes that usually because the populations are isolated from each other, they're going to start diverging from each other. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, how that actually happens in a second. But as the populations diverge in different environments, what ends up happening is that what started from the same look ends up becoming two different looks as the populations change over time as exposed to different environments, uh, experiencing different mutations, and even different uh, random events. In other words, different genetic drift. So when all is said and done, the populations will diverge separately from each other. But since environments change over space and over time, what ends up happening is that this process will repeat over and over again. So maybe from one finch, you create all those Galapagos finches. But then each one of those new kinds of finches can diverge further if there is also separation within those populations. And then within, if within those populations, more diversity happens and more separation, even more. So it's kind of like, you know, every time that you create new diversity, those new diverse things can then split even more. And then you end up getting that tree of life. And you see those in the pictures that all, of, all over the screen here. The idea is that from one, many split. But then from each one of those splits, many can split. If they keep being isolated. And that's how you go from the original life forms, from all life came from, to all the life forms on Earth. Step by step, little by little, Divergence, mutations, isolations, differential selection, differential gen genetic drift, differential mutations, and with isolation, different species. Then, but I see. I know it can be seen very hard to believe that millions and millions of species could come from that process. But remember, if you have all these species of finches coming from one ancestral finch, and that will happen in a shorter period of time, in a matter of a, of, of hundreds, hundreds of thousands of years, if you have four billion years of evolution. That's enough time for all the species on Earth to have diverged from original life forms at the beginning of the root of tree of life. So adaptive radiation is this process that continuous divergence and exposure to separation that's ultimately going to lead to uh, all the different life forms that we have on Earth. Earth. Now, this is going to be determined, of course, like I said, by different environments across space and time. So what you see is spatial distribution patterns where specific species will live in specific places. Now, we talked about this in the evolutionary lecture series, and we talked about the fact that Darwin noticed that animals seem to be fitted for their environments and that there was differences between species depending on where they live, like the tortoises, like the finches, and like the different fam people in the family there of the pangolins and anteaters and armadillos. They're all from the same big group of animals, or, but they split from each other because they were in, exposed to different environments and isolated from each other, so they evolved separately from each other. Uh, in the case of the pictures on the bottom, it was because of geology. In the case of the picture at the top, it's because each of them colonized a different island and they weren't really having uh, um, too much gene flow between them because it was too far away for migrations to be significant enough for you to establish a hybrid zone between them and to continue gene flow between them. So what ends up happening is that with that isolation, it could be geographic in the cases of the ones you see here, you see these patterns of diversity where each organism is matched to the environment that exists in a specific place in a specific time. Now, uh, that's why biogeography is proof of evolution because it sees that. And it also proves that when you have two different organisms in similar environments, they also tend to uh, pr produce similar traits like the sugar glider and the fly squirrel, which have common ancestors that do not have that characteristic of being able to glide, but because they have similar pressures, even though in different environments, the trait evolves separately in different environments. And that's an event, something that shows you that different organisms can have similar traits if they are exposed to the same conditions. Either way, what that shows is that the distribution patterns of life around the world and across time indicate that as evolution takes place, uh, the environment is what's making the uh, putting the pressure on organisms, and that's what ultimately leads to the, these patterns uh, of different things showing up in different environments and of same things showing up in similar environments. So convergent and divergent evolution, analogous and homologous structures, you know, all that stuff that we already talked about. All right? Remember, homologous structures is similarities because of common ancestors, but everything else might be different because you're in different environments. And then analogous structures is similarities because of common pressures. So everything else is different because that one pressure was the same, you end up with the same structure for that one trait. 
So these things, uh, analogous structures is evidence of converging evolution and homologous structures evidence of divergent evolution. So all of these are awesome things that have to do with evolution and I hope you learned some a lot. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how, how evolution actually happened at the genetic level. Very interesting. I'll see you guys then.